Hey, what's going on, everybody out there? Thank you for listening to the Scorpion Show podcast. I know you guys haven't heard from us in a week or so, but we are back. And I want to say thank you to everyone who's been listening and downloading our shows and also telling their friends to listen to the podcast. For all those listening, please make sure you download. And if you haven't told a friend, Tell somebody today. I know your coworker probably going to look at you or, you know, if you're riding on the bus, if we make you laugh, tell them you're listening to the podcast. We made you laugh. I hope you guys all had a great Labor Day weekend. I didn't go to Atlanta for Labor Day weekend. I haven't been to Atlanta in about four years for Labor Day weekend. But to those who went down there, I hope you guys had a good time. And while having a good time, I hope you wrapped it up while having a good time. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want you in three months to be taking a test or something ain't right. I thought it was six. Hey, it could come up at any time. It's not time. six, but it's three. three. Okay. Three Maybe months. Okay. Three I to it was six, six months. I could yeah. be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, you should get tested every <laughs> yes. six months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you're one of those that get around yeah. every three months. But you know, some stuff don't show up until... Never mind. Shut up. <laughs> 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 Listen. Wrap it up. Yes, wrap it the hell up. You know, what I'm wrap saying? it up. These mosquitoes have been killing me this summer. Yes, they have. Like, if I can't even sit outside on the block. Yes, like without worrying about being bit, bit by a mosquito in the chest yesterday, and I was just like, "Oh my god, this has not been a good summer for mosquitoes." No, or well, for people with mosquitoes. No, I, I, I just try not to sit outside too much, but you know, the mosquitoes going to do what they're going to do. I thank God my neighbor had some off, but now since. She claimed we used it up being my well, family. Uh, you know? She's not lying. <laughs> I think y'all use up a lot of her stuff. <laughs> oh, don't try it now. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, but quiet as is kept. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so, Thank you God know, the y'all summer. Are not my neighbors. Go ahead. <laughs> don't. But y'all would have got the hint a long time ago. Yeah. This is, one of my neighbors came and knocked on my door and asked me if I had some seasoning salt. <laughs> Season I said, salt? excuse me? <laughs> First of all, I don't even like you. Oh, my God. I looked at her and said, no, I don't have none of that. (laughs) (laughs) None of it. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) Don't come knocking on my door asking for no seasoning. The only only place we go is we go next door or they come here. You know, we don't go to everybody else's house on the block to ask them for anything. But shout out to my neighbors that's on the block. Um, So, yeah, I hope y'all had a great Labor Day weekend. Um, No matter where you went, I hope you had fun. Because I didn't really do too much. So over Labor Day weekend, um, we found out that Kevin Hart was in a car accident. And he was in a car with two other people. Or it could have been three other people. But I believe it was two other people. One was a trainer. He was the boyfriend. Oh, it could have been. I think it was three. Oh, my God. They're going to kill me because I don't have the, the right amount of Kevin number of Hart people. Kevin Hart was in a car accident. Yes, yes he was. <laughs> That's what and, we're talking about. Kevin and we Hart. heard that, you know, he had to get back surgery and everything. And, um, oh, my God. So we found out he had to get back surgery. He got the surgery. His wife saying that he's doing fine. But, every you know, the news is saying it's a major back injury. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of back injury it is, but it required surgery. And it, it kind of scared me because when you injure your back, that's major. You're going to have to go through the um, rehabilitation process. You may have to learn how to walk all over again. Like, I'm just hoping that it's not that bad for Kevin Hart. Um, I found out that he had two projects already completed, but the rest of his movies, they are in limbo. You know, and, you know, he's been to talk around Philly about this car accident. Um, I haven't seen any pictures or haven't seen any videos of him, but I'm hoping that he recovers. I mean, it's going to take him a while, but, you know, I I hope that he has a successful recovery and he's always been busy. So but it's just going to it's just going to take him a while. He's a busy little man. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He makes sure he gets his checks. Yes. Touring movies. I don't he don't care what kind of movie it is. I haven't seen all his movies, but, you know, he stayed working. He stayed with a job. And, you know, I just hope that this doesn't hurt him too much or hurt his career too much. Him being in this car accident. And I know that it's a lot of uh, scandal about how did he make it to his house and I seen something like the police were called 90 minutes after. I'm not going to get into all of that. Wait, so he didn't go straight to the hospital? 
No. He went home first. Yeah. That's 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 all alleged that he went home first and that but they didn't dial nine one one until ninety minutes later. That just doesn't don't sound right to me. Right. But you know, it's it's the talk with everybody. Right. It doesn't talking sound about right because when I saw the pictures of his car, I can't imagine somebody getting into an accident or like that. Or waiting ninety minutes and to, to tell somebody not calling nine one one, whether it be them or somebody who was out there, any type of witness. I can't imagine seeing that type of car accident and not calling nine one one. Right, like I can't. Ninety minutes. That's over an hour. Over an hour and a half. Yeah, like oh, yeah. I don't believe that. I'm just gonna wait until all of that stuff comes. Out and we know exactly what happens. Well, you know, at least we know most of what happened. I just wish him a speedy recovery at this time. You know, just get well, Kevin, and and all the celebrities. And he's had a lot of well wishes out there. So you know, a lot of people have been showing him love, and he deserves all of it. So get well soon, Kevin. Yeah. Now, what everyone hasn't been loving Kevin Hart about is there was this clip that was released on Twitter with Little Nas X and Kevin Hart and about three other guys. They were in the barbershop. And this topic of conversation was Little Nas X coming out. Now, everyone on the video, you know, they seem to be like, well, why, why is it so important that you tell everybody that you're gay? Kevin Hart was saying, like, you're gay, so what? And it was like Little Nas X had to school him like you know you you know you're from the hood we're taught to hate you know people that's gay um or you know you know people just taught to be not to like gays gay people and you know it it just made me upset watching the clip was cuz Kevin Hart was kind of like you know what so what you are and it was like kind of you know he earlier this year um he suffered a backlash in his career because he was supposed to host the Oscars and this story came out about his um, past Twitter tweets about him smashing a dollhouse over his son if he found out he was gay. So, Kevin, you knew exactly what Lil Nas was talking about. So it just made me upset that he was just acting like, oh, well, I don't know what it is. You're gay, so what? Who's going to care? Well, you know, people were defending him, saying that they felt like Kevin Hart was speaking for people in the back who may not have understood. But I feel like Kevin Hart was the wrong person to be speaking up for anybody. Right. Because, like you said, (laughs) of his past um, run-ins with uh, the LGBT community. Um, I posted the clip on my Instagram, and I just thought that it was really, really... uh, it was I didn't I didn't like I didn't like the way Kevin Hart looked. I thought that he was um in my opinion, I thought that he was being a tad bit condescending. You knew exactly what he was talking about. Um you wanted him to explain. But see my thing is why why do heterosexual men want gay men to explain why they are the way they are, but yet these men never want to explain why they do what they do to their wives and their families when they go out and cheat? See, it's, oh, we're working on it, and my wife, and I love my wife, but no one's ever explaining But yet they want gay men to explain why it is that they're gay, why it is that they're attracted to other men. I don't get it. And so I feel like for somebody like Kevin Hart and and the rest of the men, period, on this show. By the way, it's called The Shop, Uninterrupted. I feel like it's just become one of those things that gay men only, I'm, I'm sorry, straight men only want to have this type of conversation when they are in the majority. When it's more of them and and less of gays in the conversation because they feel like they can overpower the conversation. Oh, well, I don't understand. Well, you got to help me to understand. Oh, I don't think I can ever understand that. You understand very well. Like Little Nas X said, you are from the hood, Kevin Hart. You know exactly what it's like for gay men to be bashed in the hood. And thank God I've never had to explain myself to anybody. Right, right. And, <laughs> Even exactly. in my 30s. But there are people who do have to explain themselves. And it's like... Kevin Hart, you are from Philly. Yes, North Philly. North Philly, okay? <laughs> so you know exactly what it's like. So whether whether he was trying to speak for those in the back, like some people who have been defending him have been saying, I just think it was just ignorant on his part, especially when you were someone who just earlier this year were banned from hosting the Oscars because of homophobic comments. And then with you, the comments that you made about 
your son. It's just like, come on, like Kevin Hart. I don't think Kevin Hart should have been a part of this conversation. I just don't. I really don't. Mm. And to be quite honest with you, I don't know why Little Nas has why this. I mean, shout out to Little Nas, but I just feel like Little Nas, you don't have to explain yourself to these men. You don't explain yourself at all to these men. As a matter of fact, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. You came out because you wanted to come out, and that was that. But I'm glad that, you know, Lil Nas X is talking about it. Because you never know who's watching and who he may help with them watching this show. Now, I've never watched The Shop, and I know it's been on for about a year or so. I hope I think this is the one LeBron James show, but if it's not, then my bad. But I do know that this show has been on for a yes, while. It is. It is LeBron. LeBron. But okay. he just happened. I, he wasn't on this particular episode. Okay. Which is good for him. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, his publicist probably got the memo and said, no, LeBron won't be here for that. Yeah, but I want to know why <laughs> did they think that this was, you know, Lil Nas X's people thought this would be a great space for him to come out and have this conversation. I don't know either. Yeah, it's it just doesn't sound right, but I never watched it, and it's definitely going to have me watching. And I hope I don't get upset with watching more from the show, but I can already tell that I will be. And Little Nas shouldn't have been the only gay one in the room having exactly. this conversation. It exactly, been I think it should have been more talking yes. about it. I think so. I think it should have been more than one. And I also think that, like I said. Straight men like to dominate these kind of... First of all, they like to dominate these kind of conversations because many of them are... Uh, many of them are afraid to have these type of conversations. We also have some straight men who are on the down low. Yeah. So it, it's better for them to have a bunch of straight men in the room with them and they can dominate this conversation about gays and gay men and the gay lifestyle, which I just find... There should have been someone else with Little Nas X, X to help him. Along. Not saying that he needed help, but it should have been someone else to with him the to support the conversation right. on his end, rather than this young black guy explaining himself to these older black men. I just don't. I don't. I don't. I didn't like that. I didn't like yeah. that at all. I didn't like it. Um, I just. Yeah, I didn't care for yeah, it. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. You know, I can't wait to watch it, and I hope that when we come back on here next week. We don't have to tell them a new asshole. I'm just really hoping that we don't have to. <laughs> I hope I hope not. Well, they might. Never mind. But shout out to. <laughs> I was about to say Kevin Hart may be torn a new he, asshole. You know what? Where he's at. He is recovering. I'm yeah. a lamb recovering. He, he, he a new asshole. <laughs> they say he's back, but how far down are they operating? Stop that. I'm going to let him recover. Shout out to Kevin Hart. And speaking of more gay stuff, I shouldn't say gay stuff, gay topics. Malik Yoba. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, listen. Baby. I don't want nobody to get upset because I don't have nothing bad to say. <laughs> now, he posted this video. Now, listen. Y'all know about the young man who passed away last month. You know, there was a bunch of rumors about his death. Was he killed? Did he commit suicide? And we still don't know the truth. Yeah, we still don't know the truth. But right now, I'm just going to say drug overdose. I'm going to go with drug That's overdose. That's what I'm going to go with, too. I'm not going to say... And I'm not going to say... Um, a suicide i'm going to say accidental drug overdose because yes. i don't believe in my heart that he committed suicide i no. think it was an accident and so you know the video that everyone has been sharing malik yoba happened to share the video and i mean he went on a long essay and it took about a week or two for this story to pick up because i didn't even know it was there someone tagged me shout out to daniel he tagged me and I started reading it, and then I went down to the bottom, and he talked more about him being trans attracted, meaning that he's a trans that that he's attracted to trans women, and you know he was basically putting his support out there, and you know it just it made me upset to see that the headline was just like Malik Yoba loves trans women, Malik, and, and like it just made me upset that people were doing all of these clickbait topics and i'm like did you guys get anything else from what he was saying in in this um post that he made so you know everyone has been talking about it it's been a lot of love and support for him nobody came down on him like i didn't see any negative comments especially from a lot of the celebrities there they, you know their comments were at the top um but then i happened to uh, see a post from you know his ex-wife 
upset that she's not upset about what Malik posted. She's upset that he has not told his fam that he has not told his family that he was that he's attracted to trans women and also that he's dating a trans woman. Now Malik wonder, never said that. I wonder that. how she knows that he's dating a trans woman. Well, when you got two kids, I'm sure you know you know some things. No, I'm saying if his ex wife, how does he know? Well, that's not necessarily true because there's women who are laying in the bed with their men every night and don't know that he's messing around with trans women or other men or other so women true, or other women. So <laughs> that's not necessarily true. My question is, how does she know? That Maybe he told her, but she, but they never told the children. That's the only thing that I can think of is that he told her, but they never talk to the children and that is something you want to consider i don't know how old malik yoba's children are but if they the people see that post and you got children in middle school high school you know you're going to be subject to ridicule by other students so you should be careful about some things that you share but in that moment you know he probably wanted to put it out there and then you had some people say um or i i seen a story i didn't even read it that oh 20 years ago Malik Yoba tried to um, have well, sex with her. Some people while didn't she was say a, that. You know, back in the some day. Some people didn't say that. <laughs> Apparently, the trans woman came out mm. and po- posted that. I don't believe it. Some people didn't say that. She said that. And then she went on to say that she's almost certain that there's more trans women. I just think that people. Let me tell you something. I didn't want to be insensitive because, listen, <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that are doing things to survive right there are a lot of adults out there that are doing things to survive there are also a lot of underage people that are out there doing things to survive too um and i don't just and i don't mean underage people who are doing it against their will i mean people who are doing underage people who are doing it because they feel like i need this money not because someone's making them do it but because they're like i need this money I ran away from home. I need some type of support. So I'm going to go out there and do this. Uh, I don't like how the, this particular person came out and tried to make it seem as if Malik Yoba was out here looking for little kids and uh, going to this trying pimp to that, his character. Try, yeah, try, this pimp that had, that was pimping out kids. I don't like the way this person did this. And I felt as though it was, it was, it wasn't good intentions on them coming out and saying this. Um, with that being said, I don't know if this is true that you were 13 or 14 or 15 out there selling it. your body. I'm not 100% sure who you thought was going to pay to have sex with you. If not an adult man, then who? Because not another child's not paying you for sex. No. So if, 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 if it was, if it, and I don't want to sound insensitive, but all these years later, now you have an issue with supposedly, allegedly, this adult man having sex with you when you were out there selling yourself. Selling yourself. But again, you're out there selling yourself. Who do you think, if you're out there on the street selling yourself, who you think is going to pay for it? Mm-hmm. An adult man. No kid is going to pay you to have sex. You're out there selling your street, yourself in the middle of the night to adult men. And now 20 years later, I want to say that Malik Yoba was having sex with me because now Malik Yoba has come out and admitted to liking trans women. So now I can say 20 years ago when I was 14, he was having sex with me. Like, uh, I just think that people's motives are just so fucked fucked up. up. (laughs) Like, you know, like if it was, a, don't know. I just, I I just feel like, again, if you're selling your body, who's going to pay for your body? Other than, and don't get me wrong, it's not right that an adult man is paying for a child's body. Lord knows that's not right. But how is it that you are saying that, yeah, well, I was out there doing my thing and selling my body, and then here he comes. And it's like, well, who did you expect to pay for it? I now just don't believe bashing. that story. I don't period. believe it either. I don't believe it either. I, I ain't even had to read it. Uh, I don't believe it. 
I don't believe it either. I just think, and the reason why I don't believe it is because I, I don't, I don't know. I and don't believe it's a lot of admitted holes. to you right. know saying that he's trans attractive. And then I don't now. like how she came out and said that. Oh, and I'm sure there's other trans women out there who can basically back up what I'm yeah. saying. And it's like, so you're basically you're signaling other trans women to come to out come and say out and, and lie. And to, and say. Yeah, and I don't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. I read it and I was like, yeah, this sounds like you just trying to. Get yeah. your 15 minutes of fame and then trying to get other people on board with you. And I was yeah, just like, no, I, I'm not feeling that. Y'all know how I feel about that. I don't like stuff like that at all. I, and, you know, I just feel like, first of all, why are you trying to out somebody? You know, that's what it feels like. It's an outing, but I don't even believe that he did something like that. And then you're trying to get other people to jump on board. It's like you're trying to kill this man, this man's career. All and because, re- yeah. reputation. Yeah, like I don't, I don't even believe that, um, not at all. But I'm, I'm glad that Malik spoke up, and there are many of men who are trans. First of all, a lot of men can't even tell these days. Yeah, if you're looking at, I just uh, was talking um, to one of my friends, a natural friends born and, woman uh, yeah. or a trans. Woman. I was just talking. He said he just couldn't. Yeah, he didn't. You can't tell these yeah, days, and especially because a, a lot of them got good doctors these days. So you just don't know. I'm sorry, now, ladies. I'm sorry, yeah, ladies, but <laughs> it is what it is, though. It, yeah. it really is. Yeah, I'm almost certain that your man at one point in time has looked at a trans woman and didn't realize it was a trans woman. Yeah, but it's not his fault. It's not his if fault. He, he saw he's, a, he, he's attracted. He he was attracted. Men are attracted to, to the physical, yes. and that is the behind and the breast. That's what men are attracted to. And if a trans woman is walking down the street and her body is on, on point, yes, <laughs> he's gonna look. Because I've been, I haven't been set up, but, you know, I've been attracted to, um, how can I say, to trans men, because I thought it was a, a man, but it's a trans man. So it works on, it works out on both sides, and it's nobody's fault. It, you know, it just it is what it is, and that's, that's the guy's honest truth. But And what's happening, too, these men are seeing these trans women. They're physically attracted to them when they see what they see. And then once they figure out that it is a trans woman, their curiosity is now running rapid. So now they want to figure out, "Mm, let me just see what's up. Yeah, some some (laughs) some are willing to try it it on the DL and some are just like, no. Right. But I just I'm I'm glad that some trans women protect themselves by waiting until they get home. They might get the phone number or everything, but they let them know. Now, before we go any further, no, yeah, you this no is island. who I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because. Have you ever had anybody take you an island? No, I don't play those games. So, <laughs> he's not going to fuck up my train of thought. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just think that it's better if you let them know over the phone or through text message after you meet him because you never know what kind of reaction you're going to get if right. you tell that person right That's away. True. That's true. That like you, it's kind of like it's kind of like for instance when you when you meet somebody you need to let them know and I'm speaking for you. You need to let them know speaking if you're for t- me. No, I'm just oh. saying you need to let yeah. You I'm saying I'm speaking like oh. like for instance you for example. When oh. you meet somebody you need to let them know if you're a top or bottom. I don't see I don't like that. And I'm going to be honest. I hate when the conversation or the topic up top, bottom, or versatile. Comes no, I don't up. mean if you're dating them. I just I, mean no, if y'all. No, not even dating. Just getting to know somebody. I'm not. I'm not having that conversation. Like the fuck. Don't ask me that, and and don't think that I'm going to talk to you about that. <laughs> talk because to stop about playing that. With, stop me? playing with me. <laughs> no, because I really, really hate that. <laughs> I hate that Listen, question. That conversation don't ask is so me that. 2002. Yes. Are you a top like, or don't bottom? Don't ask me. I'm getting so <laughs> that used to be on the chat on the chat yes. <laughs> on the chat rooms. You a top or bottom? Like Bye. don't even don't even <laughs> ask me that. that. In 2019, no. if y'all don't know what Kevin is doing, no, and, and you won't, because first of all, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play the labels game. I, I really don't. You don't. But you, I you love lay it low. Sex. Period. And you spread it wide. Now, no, you might spread it wide, <laughs> but I just love sex. Period. And I ain't got time to be describing. Oh, um, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, come yeah, on. No, I got time. <laughs> we <for> grown. <laughs> <laughs> we fucking grown. Baby, now, either we baby, gonna do this or baby. we not. 
Where did okay. love go? <laughs> That's, you know, I'm just saying. I just hate, I fucking, oh, I'm getting so mad just thinking about oh, that. Oh, boy, question. did somebody ask you that recently? You are upset. I just hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, boy. Somebody must have asked you that recently. I hate it. I just do. (laughs) Damn. Would you ever answer if somebody asked you? No, I don't have an answer. What if it was somebody that that you were attracted to? Like somebody that you were attracted to and they asked you and you'd be like, oh, I hate that you asked me that, but I'll tell you. I will probably give them an honest answer, but not not in the way that they want me to. Want you to. Not with those three three words I want. Right. It's going to be an explanation. Right. So, but I just, I just really hate that. And and those, um, to the straight women out there, don't be asking your uh, gay friends that they top bottom or versatile. <laughs> Go ask your man is he, if, if he's top bottom or versatile, and see what he says. Oh, now that's a good one. <laughs> and see what he says. Don't ask your gay friend that. Go ask your man. Oh that. my god. Okay. Y'all be and out here smelling your man's that. dicks. No, turn him around and bend him over, <laughs> and see how. Why that hole is? It's, I'm not playing yeah, with him. He out here messing with a female. Yeah, he's messing with a female. All right. No, no. See, I'm. See, this is where I'm gonna stop him because <laughs> it's all. It's games. nothing wrong. Because you know, but some women play with their men that way. Some women and, do. And I've seen videos. Yes, me too. Where and there are actually, women. Oh my god, it looks good. Look, like ooh, I, I'm. Who, who you talking it's, about? Are we talking about the same people? They're, they're a couple. Yes. From Philly. Yes. Yup. <laughs> They got some good videos. They were, I, and they don't. And, and know, they don't he, hold nothing back. No, they don't. I'm like, oh wow. He worked downtown. Oh, I don't know where he worked. I but. I follow. I follow both of them. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Miami two one five. Yeah, uh, well, I, he, that used to be his name. He got no. He has two. two he got two pages. <laughs> but they called the Carlisle couple. That's who we're talking about. Shout yeah. out to them. And they yes. are a. And I. You know what's yes. so funny? Because he's done. He started out doing porn in the past. I've seen mm-hmm. him in porn, and. Then I, I came across his video when he had the when he was doing the porn, he had the low cut. Now he has the dreads and he has this wife and they're freaky. He met somebody that is just as equally freaky as he is. And they are one of those open, like they are really open people. They're open to everything. He does her, she then turns around and does him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> But they have great they, sex. They, they, yes. And sometimes they I saw a video where he was pleasing her with his tongue. And then while he was pleasing her with his tongue, he was getting done by this thing. And it was Oh, oh my I God. See, I didn't see that one. But I, it's really I'm sorry yeah. for being so graphic, but I mean this is us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this and, is why you love us. Yeah, and and, and this two thousand uh it's almost twenty twenty. I'm so glad yes, that we can see stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there are couples out there that yes. are and you know what's so crazy? And it turns because, a lot of people on because those them comment sections yeah. be lit. And you know what's so crazy too? Because you wouldn't think like these are the type of people that you work with every day. Mm-hmm. These are your coworkers. These are people that you yeah. may sit next to in church. These are people that you may ride sit public transportation with every day. With. And you never yeah. know when they go home, they are <laughs> freaky with their spouses. I mean, I heard what you said. Yes. <laughs> and I can only imagine what yes, you do. Cause I'm just saying, because yeah, y'all know that the, them church ones be the freakiest ones. They do. I've heard. <laughs> yes. I've heard. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Mm. Especially this the ones one, that are Catholic. This one to my right. Oh, oh, oh. Especially them Catholic this, ones. The, especially the ones that be falling out in church. Child. Yes. Baby. Especially the, <laughs> the altar boys. Weren't you an altar boy? Never. <laughs> I think that's the face I've been looking for. You know what? You never sat on fall. Never mind. I'm not uh, speaking about something else on this thing. Don't don't. No, what happened? Because <laughs> I have never been in that kind of a setting to do that. <laughs> Shout out to my mom. <laughs> Shout you know, out to your mom. All she my play brothers that. and sisters, they <laughs> went to Catholic school, but I've never been to Catholic school. I mm. guess I came around you too late. You were a product of the public transportation. Yeah, public By the time school. you came around, she said, I ain't got no more money for that. Child, right. <laughs> and that's exactly right what happened. Yeah. And Catholic school is expensive. Yes, it is. It's, you better know somebody. My mom used to work um, for this. So I don't know what kind of discount she got, but Maybe I'm sure she, she knew got one of the something. fathers. You're trying it. <laughs> but everybody knew everybody at that church. I'm oh, sure. my God. Especially when all three of your kids go. Because all three of your si- older siblings went to Catholic But you know, they, have a, they had a father, too. So, you know, I don't I know. know I don't Monahan, know. Father, father, you're trying. Father, father Leahy. Me, bye. <laughs> father. <laughs> father. father I believe it was Father Dave. Shout out to him. If you ever watched. Father um, Dave. You're, you're trying it. What did you say? Father Dave. If you oh, ever Dave. watched the Hank Gathers. Um, 
the Hank Gathers story. Um, Father Dave was portrayed in that film. But Father Dave was a real person. He was a real person. I don't know about his scandals and stuff. You know who was a real person too? But uh yeah, he and he was at St. Elizabeth. Go ahead. Sister Mary Clarence. I don't you know what? I'm not going there with you today. Sister, I'm Sister gonna get we're gonna get through these topics. <laughs> Listen. He was, he was a real person. Portrayed by you know who. Right. Now I know y'all been looking for this Mikel movie corner and stuff. There's no Mikel movie corner today. But I'm gonna tell y'all what to find on Netflix. It's the show. Let's be talking about a lot of gay topics today. It's a gay couple <laughs> named Adair and Jason. And their new show on Netflix is called Styling Hollywood. Now, at first, I was like, child, another like queer eye type of show. That ain't because I don't watch Queer Eye for the Street Guy. I've never watched it. I, I, not even the Netflix ones. But that's the kind of vibe I was getting. And you know how. Um, on Bravo, they have all of those listing properties and all these different shows. I'm just like, oh my god, I'm not gonna like this show. So I turned this on at three thirty in the morning, and I watched six episodes, and I had two episodes left to watch. The I was captivated by first of all a black gay couple. And that they had a business that they owned and that they ran and the celebrities that they work with and the homes that they uh, that the one husband um, deals with. I just was just, you know, I just was like captivated by them. Their love, the drama with the with the clothing, the drama with the housing, the drama with the people that work for them and then the drama that they have with themselves on you know bringing a children and a child into their family or into the, they're not a family yet into their relationship it was just a great series to watch and i want you guys to watch it because there are it's top, really good it's really i'm good. on episode three it's really good and there are topics on there that i want to have a com- have conversations about so i want you guys for your homework this weekend i want you to go to netflix and it's called styling hollywood and I want you guys to watch it. It's really good. It's good drama. And I can't wait to talk about it because there's so many situations that we can have those conversations about. And that's that's that and it and it's 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 real life. Now some of the stuff might be manufactured about, oh my god, the clothes not here, or this this might got a hole in it. Like I think that's manufactured. But the other stuff, that shit is real. So but you know, holes and dresses and stuff happens. In Hollywood all the time. Or well, the dresses come three hours before. But get into the show. I think that you guys really would like it. Again, it's called Styling Hollywood with Adair and Jason. Very, very good show. I I definitely second that motion to watch it. Very good show. And so we're going to move on to some more stuff. We've been going for so long. We haven't even done a YouTube video in so long. I got some more stuff for you. Why do I hear a train? I don't know. Maybe that was somebody screaming in the background. No, it's somebody next door shooting a train. <laughs> I don't know. I am so thirsty right now. I'm really looking for something to drink. Excuse me. <laughs> and I don't have nothing to drink. I'm so mad. I got this little bit of coffee. That's, you know, Chase's sister playing with him. Uh, Mac Miller. Can you tell them about this? Uh, so we remember Mac Miller uh, dying. What was it? A year or two ago, drug overdose. Last it was year. Yeah. last year. Well, apparently they're trying to charge the person who sold him drugs <laughs> for his death. Right. I find that very very strange because the person who sold him drugs, I'm almost certain that that person did not intend for Mac Miller to die. I'm almost certain that he intended for Mac Miller to get high temporarily and then come back for more so he can continue to make his money like most drug dealers out there do. Their their goal is not to kill you. What fascinates me is that we point blame at the drug dealers, but rarely do we ever point blame at the drug user. That's true. Mac Miller was using drugs. Right. He was doing drugs. Hard drugs. Hard drugs. 
There's a consequence to doing drugs, just like there's a consequence to dealing it as well. But there's a consequence to using it. Mm-hmm. And so if you are a hard user, <laughs> something like this is bound to happen. So I don't think that we can just point blame at the drug dealer. We have to also point blame at the drug user as well. Right. Okay. Because in 2018, Mac Miller should have been well aware to say no to drugs. That campaign has been going on since the 80s. Yes. How many black people have died and they've gone after the drug dealer? Oh, oh, oh. you better preach. Let's, Let's go there. You don't hear that. I don't. I've never heard it. I've even heard about them going after the person that uh, drugged or the one who just took them drugs. One of them singers, I can't remember her name. Demetria De- Demi Lovato or something like that. When she had her little drug thing. And they went after the drug dealer, but I don't think he got any charges. But yeah, they got to chill with that. They got to chill with that. It's people out here using these drugs. But you know they don't like to see um, a lot of their people dying from these drugs. And this is something that Dave Chappelle brought up in his uh, special. He don't care because when black people were dying from the crack epidemic, nobody did nothing to save anybody. If y'all didn't watch Dave Chappelle's special, go ahead and watch it. It's it's not something where I'm going to say, oh, my God, you're going to laugh your head off because it's not. That man is up there slipping the truths in these people's mouths when they open their mouth to laugh. It's one of those kind of specials. And he got to get the truth in there, whether you like it or not. And remember, as he said on the DVD, you clicked on my picture. And that was nothing but the truth. Uh-huh. So don't get mad about what you hear me say on my special. Again, because you clicked on my picture. So it's 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 a really good special. You guys need to check it out. I um, I just don't agree with the per- them going at the... Um, the person who sold Mac Miller the drugs, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. And, you know, that's just how I feel about that situation. But if you're going to go after the drug dealers, you know, they got drugs, things y'all can do. Whatever happened to those? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what happened to it is about three weeks ago, they had a <laughs> shootout <laughs> on Airy Avenue. For all fucking day. Yes. That's what happened. Yes, tore our city up. They tore home, that block up. Them, fuck them our home. city. They tore that block but, but up. But wait, cars was crashing everywhere. Because <laughs> the cops was trying to get to to certain places. Yeah. Hitting people. It was stuff like... It was, it was a First bad, of all, what I didn't day. understand, like I told my coworker at work, I didn't understand how they had certain parts of Broad Street blocked off when it was nowhere near the actual shooting scene. Because a lot of the cops becoming, they come from all areas no, I of the mean, city. But I'm, that's true. But just the blockage, like for instance, where Shakina's grandmom's church is. That was right. nowhere near the shooting. But, they ain't but yet they had it all blocked down. off. They didn't want nobody coming <laughs> down into the area. Nowhere near the shooting. That's right. But then you causing all this havoc during rush hour. Tra- well, actually, not them. The guy who was doing the shooting. So, yeah, that's the last bad. time they went. <laughs> I hope we never have to nothing have to do with anything like that in a long time. Yeah, I hope we don't, especially not on this block. Or on that block. No, on oh. this block. Or the block next to this block. Uh, well, yeah. Or up you the street You know what? Yeah, this, this shooting spirit. Well, yeah, I'm just glad I've, and I knock on wood, I'm just glad I've never been outside or in the area where, there have been shootings because I don't know what I would do if I was out there. I have, you know, um, I have, Lord. And, and like you know how you might dream about something like that. In my dreams, I'd be moving all slow and I'm trying to really run. But in real life, like I've never had that. But I've heard it and it was so loud. Like I was like, whoever they got, they are dead. And I thank God that that person is not dead because you know we happen to know them people that got shot up around here it was just it was crazy and one is you know really still recovering and it's it's kind of sad to see just to, to see him in that state but he's trying to get himself together yeah. and i'm getting yeah he's, i don't know he's, how he got here but he's, yeah he's definitely he's definitely mm. recovering and it's sad sometimes to watch him when Ooh. he's sitting out there and it's like mm. he's zoning off and you it's it's really sad. But I thank God that he's here. And one of the things I that you. I told him 
uh, about a week ago when we were out here talking, I told him, and I don't know if you guys remember the story, but back in May, um, there was a shooting um, uh, on the block across from Kevin's, and somebody that we know very well was shot four times um, once in the head. And I had posted it, Kevin had posted it, and, you know, he had to do a lot of recovering. He's out of the hospital, he's out of rehab, and he just recently started coming back around. Um, His girlfriend started bringing him back around. But naturally, after being shot four times and once in the head, he's not the same as he was before he got shot. Um, He still, like, he still... uh, is learning how to speak. Yeah. Um, and he told me that he still, you know, he does speech therapy. So there's a lot of therapy that he's still doing. Um, he's just not doing, um, what do you call it? Uh, inpatient therapy. He doesn't have to stay at a rehab. You know, he's doing the therapy at home. One of the things that I spoke to him about when he was out here last week, I, I got to really talk to him in depth. And he said to me, um, we were talking about the day that it happened. And I guess it was kind of therapeutic for him because I never planned on wanting to talk about it. But he, you know, we were all out there talking, me, him, Richard, um, the other guy who was shot, um, Charlie. We were just all out there talking. And the two of them were, you know, and he was saying that he remembered. He said, I remember when the other guy got shot before him, he said he just saw him fall. He said he just fell. And he said, before I knew it, I fell. And he said, I fell face first. And um, I told him that that day, because, you know, we were outside when it mm-hmm. happened. And I said that when I ran up the street, first of all, it was chaos, total chaos. When I ran up the street, I told him all I could see was him laying on the ground motionless. And he said to me, and I said, you know, I was afraid because I literally thought you were dead because Jeremy was screaming for you to get up. You weren't moving. Everybody was basically standing around you like you're dead. And he said to me, well, obviously, you know, I wasn't dead. He said, but I was still conscious. He said, I could hear everything. I could hear everybody. He said, I just couldn't move my body. And when the cops came, he was the first one that they threw in the car to take to rush to the hospital. And I asked him, I said, when you were in the cop car, because me and Charlie followed behind the cop car while his body was in there i said when you were in a cop car did you pass out and he said no i was still he said i was awake i knew everything he said the cops were still yelling and talking to me to keep me conscious he said they were yelling at me to try to keep me awake so i wouldn't close my eyes he said but i was still awake and it went back to i knew he knew what he was talking about because i remember that day when we got to the hospital one of Charlie's friends who worked there came out and told us when they brought him in, he was still conscious. So I said, wow, like you really, after being shot in the head, you were still able to stay conscious from here all the way to Temple Hospital. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he said, yes, I was conscious the whole time. He said, you know, the cops just kept yelling at me not to close my eyes, to stay will, to, you know, just stay with them, he kept saying. So I was like, wow. He said, but you know, I still can't believe this happened to me. And I said, I know. And I kept telling him, I said, but thank God you are sitting here talking to us because right. it could have totally it went, went a way. different way. It could have totally gone. I can't, first of all, I can't imagine being shot once, let alone four times. And one of those four times you're shot in your head. Yeah. Can you, I can't I imagine. Can't imagine. I don't want to imagine. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. So I just kept reiterating to him. Thank God you're here. And he just kept saying, I know. He said, I know. I just keep thinking about it. Like, it could have, we could have been at his funeral the following week. Mm-hmm. But he's here with us. And I just saw him post on Instagram yesterday how he was going through some challenges with pain. He was having a lot of pain, but he was staying, you know, hopeful and whatever the case may be. And I'm just like, but I just keep thinking. And, and, and I told somebody, I think I was telling Amber that he and I have been texting for like the past month. Since he's been home and she asked me, she said, well, how was the conversation when you have with him? You know, does it? And I said, let me tell you something. Through text message, (laughs) you would never think that anything happened to him because one day when we were texting, he brought up something that happened before he got shot that I never would have thought he remembered. And I was like, oh, wow. I said, oh, you back. And he he sent me the laughing emojis and said, yeah, bro, I'm back. And I said, I know that's the fuck right. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel good because, you know, when you think of somebody like that, you think that you have to kind of remind them of certain things. But he was like, no, I remember. (laughs) And I was like, thank God. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that Mm -hmm. is a blessing. That is a blessing. So 
Yeah, I'm just happy that he's still here with us and that we can sit and talk to him. But I keep telling him, take your time. Right. You know, take your time. Because I wouldn't have came back down here. But, but see, the thing is with him, he said that, he said to me, you have to understand, I've been in the hospital since May. Mm-hmm. I, once I got out of the hospital, I went to a rehab. I stayed in that rehab and then I went home. He said, I'm tired of being indoors. I want to be outside. And I said, I get it. He said, I'm tired of looking at four walls. Everybody is going out of the door and I'm still stuck in a building. I'm tired of it. And I said, I get it. He said, I just want to be outside. I want to be in fresh air. And I said, I get it because I can't imagine being going from a hospital to a rehab to home and not being able to experience just sitting outside. And that's what he was saying to me. I I just don't want to be scooped up in the house all day. But I did tell him, you know what I told him? I said, listen, because remember, this is the second time he was shot. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, don't let it be a third time, okay? (laughs) Because I'm going to fuck you up. That's why I was shot a third time. That's why I came back. uh... And the fact that he was shot twice, months apart, and both shootings had nothing to do with him. Right. Which makes it even more weird. Like, they don't even have anything to do with you, but you keep getting shot. Like, Jesus, like, oh boy. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have to tell you about a conversation he and I had, but I ain't going to tell you on camera on this. I'll tell you after. It's time for. <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing. I'm so <laughs> mad what you just said. <laughs> about you know me? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am, boy, oh boy. Listen, it is time <laughs> for Ask Kevin and Mikel. And, you know, if you want to answer, if you, I can't even get this out because I'm still mad at him. I do. I smell it. I'm like, oh my God. Well, you know, you smell yourself before anybody yes, else smells you. Yes, amen. I'm starting to smell my Listen. Underwear. I'm like, oh boy, I got to take a shower. <laughs> Listen, I'm keeping it It is real. time for Ask Kevin and Mikel. If you would like, to ask a question for Mikel, you can go to the Scorpion Show podcast on Instagram and send us a DM. And if you're not following the Scorpion Show podcast on Instagram, please make sure you follow us. Also, you can tweet us at the Scorpion at Mikel eighty six. You can also DM D about. You can write follow us on Instagram at the Scorpion and at Mikel eighty six and the podcast. It's, yeah, and at the podcast, the Scorpion Show podcast. It's a lot going on right now in the background. <laughs> So I'm trying to be calm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, you got man. kids running you and got bouncing. Running and you got bouncing. adults screaming downstairs. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. You know what's going on. This yeah. is your house. Yeah. And I don't live here. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. Baby. So we're going to go with the first question. Like boarding house. And they're going to be uh, anonymous. So anybody that writes, you're anonymous, okay? <laughs> so don't ask me, are you going to be anonymous, okay? You're going to be anonymous. <laughs> I done clicked on the person. Okay. Oh, boy. I've been in a relationship with a guy for two years. We have a six-month-old son, and we are already on the verge of breaking up. While I was pregnant, he wasn't very supportive at all, but he gave me a promise ring to close my due date. I'm sorry. What? Finish reading it. I'm guessing it was supposed to be a I'm sorry gift. I'm sorry gift for what he did he do? All right. Finish reading it. Okay. I'm sorry. He gave me a promise ring close to my due date. I'm guessing it was supposed to be a I'm sorry gift without actually saying I'm sorry. Did she say exactly what it was that he did? I guess I'm sorry for not being there. I don't know what it was for. Okay. So, okay, so let me finish. Um, Fast forward to now. We have only had sex two to three times since I had my son in mid-February. Oh, girl, he's getting sex with somebody else. Um, He tries to pick me apart about everything I do. I court him flirting with a woman. Uh, Yeah, I just said about a few seconds ago he's sleeping with somebody else. Um, Flirting with a woman on Facebook Messenger and commented on a picture of a half-naked woman who he knows. Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> I try so hard to make it work with him, but he makes it so hard. A few days ago, he finally apologized about the whole Facebook situation after he denied it a million times when I knew the truth. That's what they usually do. <laughs> he said he wants to make it work, but it's weird because his action says, I don't want you anymore because he doesn't. Should I try to fight for my family or just leave like I intended to do? I don't know what to do. Well, I can tell you what you did do. You actually answered your own question, which is, should I leave? The answer is yes. And I think you know you should leave. And you're actually not a 
bad looking woman at all. You're a very beautiful woman. Um, so you should definitely, because I'm looking at your picture, you should definitely do you and, you know, have, you know, let you and him do what y'all need to do as far as the baby is concerned. But do you. You had that baby in February and here it is September and you guys have only had sex three times since February. That's a problem. Yeah. And you've caught him flirting with other women and yeah that's a problem sis that's he's because comfortable yeah, yeah he's and comfortable you're making it comfortable and you're for making him. it comfortable for him so yeah it's time for you to let him go it's about to be 2020 in three months you don't need to go into a new year with old baggage okay um so yeah let that man go go do you you're a beautiful woman you can find any man because you're a beautiful woman um and you obviously are not stupid but I will say this. If you write another letter like this again, I will call you stupid. I think she knows what she needs to do. Yeah. better. You oh, know better, sis. You are smart. Yeah. And most men complain when they're not having sex. Right. And if he's not complaining and but steady September, picking you apart, yeah. that's because he's getting it from somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to bust your bubble, but it's the truth. Oh, she knows. Yes. You know. It's the truth. I think y'all y'all just want to be y'all just want us to be y'all conscious or something. I don't to tell y'all the right thing. But Let me tell you something. Knowing. Can I just say, a situation like this? I'm not writing into Kevin and Mikkel because yeah. I already know I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I ain't even got to go. I'm gonna put all his stuff out if yeah. it's your place. And now, I'm if mad it's both of y'all place, then that's a different story. Ring. I'm mad about. Yeah, that I'm mad about too. that promise ring too. I'm mad that you accepted it. Yeah. But that's none of my business. So we got a next question. I have a question for your podcast. I've been seeing this guy who is discreet about being gay. He has dated both girls and guys in the past. He presented he presented himself as being a top. What did we talk about earlier? Oh boy. Which was cool with me because I've always considered myself a bottom. Although I've never actually had something up my anus. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I've only had oral <laughs> sex with all my partners. Well, I guess you could have this never mind. With him, I wanted to take it further because I felt like he was worth it. We have tried at least five times, but have been unsuccessful because it's too painful. He left me at his apartment alone for the first time, and for some reason, I decided to go through his stuff. I felt bad for doing it, but not bad enough to stop. Excuse me. <clears throat> I ended up finding two jock straps and a douche in his underwear drawer. <laughs> and I'm a bit upset because finding that makes me feel like he's not being honest with me about his sexual desires. My desires are actually changing, so I think I'm interested in possibly topping him with the hopes of even being versatile one day. I decided just to act on it by playing with his butt the next time I perform or on him. But he told me to stop. He gets really upset whenever I touch or mention his butt. How should I bring the conversation up without letting him know that I went through his stuff when he keeps shutting me down whenever I mention topping? Sorry if it's too graphic. I understand you can't read something like this on your new podcast. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And let me tell you something. <laughs> if he's not yeah. <laughs> letting you on his back, it's because, you know... He's probably, if he's not letting you top him, it's more because he's not interested in and you, you topping, topping him. him. Yeah, because right. you just don't let, right. and anybody. not to be mean, you don't let anybody on your back. That's right. That's right. And it's not, <laughs> and like you said, it's not to be mean to you, the person who sent in the letter, but you don't, everybody doesn't let everybody top them. He may not look at you as that person to give be, it up to. to give it, yeah, to give it up to. Point I point. mean, you yourself said that you consider yourself a bottom. So... That's how he considers you too. Yeah, and yes, some bottoms do top, and yes, and some tops bottom. Yes, but he, but everybody doesn't bottom for everybody. Right. I feel like this Kevin, this conversation was more. I mean, this topic was more for you. It's not more for me. Yeah. It's for for the both of us. No, because I, I think that you bottom more, and you I, are trying me, and I'm not even gonna go there. I am not even gonna go there because you can't even. First of all. <laughs> nobody can say I don't know what anybody can yeah, say nobody, somebody, I don't even, no, somebody can say it no, they just haven't where, said it where, <laughs> okay where? don't say what somebody can't say no I'm gonna tell you that <laughs> they just ain't saying it I'm gonna tell you that I don't even have those kind of, kind you of don't have those conversations but you when know I what? do stuff 
let me tell you, when I do stuff, I talk about it. That's right. And there, nobody but I, can't tell but me. But I've never heard you talk about anything. Nobody <laughs> can say, oh, Kevin said, yeah, let me tell you, I don't play those games. I play a lot of games, but, you don't but play I that. don't play them games. Yep. Not now. Not at least right now. Because ain't nobody. <laughs> let me tell you back. something. I, listen, <laughs> that's a big back to climb on. It ain't that big. <laughs> but I'm telling you now. The fuck? That's just you. <laughs> Mikel is just and he is and he and this is the Christian man. Y'all should see if y'all watching the video, y'all should see what he just showed me. <laughs> no, but Todd, you shouldn't have been snooping through his stuff. Yeah, you should. When and you snoop, you're gonna find fine. things you might That's not right. like. That's right. And to be honest with you, I don't know how you can bring it up to him because you were going through his stuff. Yeah. And if you bring it up, he's gonna easily flip the script and say, What the fuck were you doing? Yeah, and, snooping. and if he don't want you back there, I don't know. Because anybody going through my shit, I don't want you coming back to my house. Because, you know, I don't, Kevin. I don't. If you go through my stuff, yeah. my personal stuff, and I find out about it, cabinet, right. you and I find out know. about it, I don't want you back. Because, and that means that, and I'm not saying that you're a thief, but that means that some people will steal from you. Because mm. what you snooping for? Right. What, why, why did you go through my drawers? Yeah. What, why were you opening the drawers to, what were you looking for? Were you looking for money? What were you looking for? He was just trying to be newsy. Well, now he found something. Yeah. <laughs> so he should have just. Yeah. It's yeah. best. Some things are best unknown. Yep. Like how. Never mind. Yeah. Don't tell him what you did in that church last week. <laughs> you are ridiculous. <laughs> this don't look like a good platter. No. Ew. Why would he post that? Everything looks dry. Even the ketchup. Because it's not enough ketchup. Not enough. That's too much. I don't think so. Let me. Ew. You like it? You like a whole abundance of ketchup on yourself? You don't think that's enough ketchup? That's a little bit of ketchup to me. Oh my god! It don't look like it's enough. And I think it might be the way that the the picture came out. I think that's why it looks like. No, that. it's like that because the food looks nasty. I don't. I wouldn't say nasty. Not when, when you're hungry. Sometimes it don't even. Oh, you had to see this video right here. This guy was punching this lady. I don't know what happened. This guy was punching this lady in the face. Look. And she had a gun in her hand the whole time. I don't want to see nobody. No, she's not. Sh no, she's not going to shoot him. No. Mikhail. She's not shooting. She's shooting. She's shooting, but she's shooting that way. She's not shooting him. And the cops pulled right on up. Imagine you opening your window and seeing this outside. Well, yeah, I can. You can imagine seeing it. Yeah, because they did it the other day. There was one more question, and um, I'm trying to find it. It was it was somebody that wrote something. It, let me see. I know it was from last week, and I and I ain't trying to hold y'all all up because I know y'all got other things to do. Because it's a mixture of. Here we go. No, we I did that one. There was another one. Hold up. Hold up. Here we go. I have a this 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 letter is about her son. About a year ago, he told me he was gay. I I'm thinking whatever she thought she sent, the first part didn't send. But she said about a year ago, he told me that he was gay, referring to her son. I'm excited because he felt safe safe to tell me. What I want is for him to be free in himself, out and proud. I myself am bisexual, so I'm all out. But he ain't ready. Now, I don't plan at all to out my baby, but I'm just wondering what encouragement I can give him. Also, he is 12 years old and just started the seventh grade. He has so many questions that I can't answer, but luckily I do have a cousin and he's been very supportive. Okay, I'm going to say if he has questions, you need to be trying to give him some answers. He's in the seventh grade. He's 12 years old. Question, um, questions about what, though? Yeah, she didn't. She now, never if there are questions about, that have something to do with a gay relationship, she can't answer those. I think, well, she says she's bisexual. Oh, so. okay. Maybe she can answer that. Yeah, sorry. she can answer that. When it comes to sex part, I would say wait till he's a little bit older, but definitely this is the best time to be teaching him about safe sex 
and you know all the different diseases and stuff that's out there preparing him for the world and even there even if there are things that he can't ask you there are different programs out there that's available for him to attend um if you would like for him to attend those type of programs and he could be around people who can mentor them but you also should be there and and make yourself known because you just don't want to throw your child off to everyone because even though some people are there to help you know some people got their own things in their head Mm -hmm. you know and i'm not even going to continue to go on that but there's always people that you know that can help and just because you have a cousin who's gay doesn't mean that your cousin's in a position to to have those conversations answer those kind of questions right right but he is 12, and I, I would say still let your son live. Right. And when he's ready to come out, because did she say she doesn't want to out him? Yeah. Yeah. He, that, he came to her. He oh, never uh, just, like, came out to the world. Oh, he just came out. Well, then that's well, that's between you and your son. There's no reason why she should ever have that conversation with anybody else. Um, but, yeah, just let him. Let him. First of all, I think it's I think it's dope that he came to her. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now he feels comfortable enough that when he's ready to have more conversations, he can come to his mom and have those conversations with her. Yeah. Um, but I would, like you said, when he's ready to have those conversations, have it with him. Until then, he's 12. Let him live his life. Let him let him be a kid because that's what he is, is a kid. Let him be a kid. Let him, you know, and when when he gets to that point when he's ready to do what it is that teenagers do, I feel like because he came to you so early, he will come to you again. So be prepared and just love on him, you know? Yeah. I just wouldn't be ready to take a child out of just just me, like, Mm -hmm. you know, going to like pride parades and stuff like that. But I mean, if he's, I don't know how open he is. Right. Um, But you know, remember when Dwayne Wade's son was at the pride parade earlier this year, and a lot of people criticized. Yeah, a lot of, (laughs) but you know, Dwayne Wade's son is a lady. Yes, (laughs) and she sits on that. Well, I mean, it's it's true. I mean, uh, truth is a light, and the light is a way. So, (laughs) 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 and you know, she sits on the sideline with her legs crossed, with her book in her hand. I mean, but that's him. And I like the fact that that is him and his parents allow him to To be him. him. Uh And I like the fact that, first of all, I don't think it's anything wrong with taking a child that is gay to a pride parade. And I'm going to tell you why. Because from what I see, there's nothing bad that goes on at pride parade. I've seen a lot of stuff. Yeah, but I don't see, I don't think, I don't think kids or their parents that are with them would allow them to be exposed to certain things in a pride parade. You understand what I'm saying? Like for instance, when Dwayne Wade's son was there, he was uh, with his family. He was with Gabrielle Union. He was with his older brother and his older brother. I like, I love the fact that his older brother supports him. He's with his oldest brother and they were having a good time. They were on, I guess they were on the float or walking behind the float, but they're not walking through the parade and seeing all the crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Right. And I think at a certain point, they're probably like, okay, it's time to go. But I don't see anything wrong. As long as you know how to shield and expose your child to what it is they need to ex- be exposed to, I don't have a problem with somebody taking their child to a pride parade. Um, but let him let him be him. And like I said, I love the fact that the Wades allow their son to be him. And nothing is more fulfilling and warming to me when parents accept their kids for who they are right you know what i mean first of all i love the fact that Dwayne wade is this big well former basketball star now and his son his young son is openly gay and he's just like that is my son and i love him and his brother is like that is my brother and i love everybody is just loving on this and, boy. and you know what's funny just imagine how many kids don't get that yeah and you know what's funny why they ain't had Dwayne Wade in that best in that barbershop talking with Kevin Hart about yeah being gay yeah Why, but then that could have been a great conversation because then, then you got yeah a straight somebody man who has who a gay son. son yeah oh yeah you're now, right come on and him and not him and Little Nas X could have been happened. yeah they could have been tag teaming with each other yes. with that conversation you're right mm-hmm. you're absolutely right I didn't think about that mm-hmm. yeah because LeBron James said nope <laughs> not today <laughs> yeah. He did. <laughs> and we got we got one last story before we let you guys get back to your weekend. Mother. It just was up here. It was just up oh, here. Oh, God. 
Wait, I think I went to the wrong Twitter. I meant, I'm trying to do the Scorpion Show podcast, Twitter, I meant Instagram, and this. It was just up here, and it was a good question. You should delete them once you are finished with them. Yeah. Here we go. Hey, y'all. I'm a 21-year-old woman from Maryland, and I have an older sister who has been physically and emotionally abusive since we were kids. We were latchkey kids, so I had to deal with that on my own, as well as the fact that my parents didn't even believe me when I told them she would abuse me because they never saw it. It was it wasn't until she was diagnosed with bipolar schizoaffective disorder that they started taking me more seriously. Dealing with her gave me more severe anxiety growing up, leading to me taking medication, seeing a therapist and even seeing a neurologist because I thought I had an autoimmune disease when it was actually stress. Me and her and my mom all currently live together and at this point she hasn't touched me in a couple months because after the last time my mom threatened to kick her out. But my question is, am I? Am, but my question is, am I wrong for planning to cut her off once I'm able to move out and live my life on my own? We have good times like anybody, but to this day she's never apologized or acknowledged what she's done, and I have so much built up frustration about it inside. It's very difficult because with her mental disorders and her being a cancer, she's moody on edge and has a different reality than everybody else. One time she cursed me out and made a scene in our apartment complex because she thought I called her a bitch when I literally whispered something to myself that had nothing to do with her. Bitch. Yes. (laughs) She has different personalities. that's what you whispered. (laughs) And she heard you. No, I'm joking. (laughs) Let me stop. She has different personalities with different family members, and she seems to only show her Monique from Precious Side and a Disney persona to the rest of the family. My mom is intimidated by her now because she finally saw her abuse aside, and my older brother has this kind of always, I know, I told him to send it long, been detached from it. He stayed busy and stopped living with us. When I was 14, now he's in Japan. Wait, hold on. So what done. was the question? Let's get to the question it's, part. Let me go. Let me. I'm almost finished. Okay. So I've always dealt with this on my own. Should I remain faithful? Should I just remain faithful? She'll find the right medication and give another chance, or is it okay to cut a family member off for good? Thank you all in advance. Okay, so she's dealing with a sister who has been physically and emotionally abusive to her and now when she says to be mental yeah when she says abusive she didn't say anything like sexual i Mm -hmm. was thinking sexual but But more physical yeah Yeah, physical and her sister also has a disorder disorder right yeah it was she's mental and i don't think that while it's uh, it's unfortunate that you were getting abused i don't think you should cut her off because she's not in her right mind Apparently. And if you if you argue back and say, no, she is. Well, I'm only going off of what you're saying in this message, which is clearly she's not in her right mind. Right. So I would not hold that against her and cut her off once you move out, because you already know that your sister is not all the way there. And I would have a conversation with her and your family about it as a sit down and say, you know, this is how I really, really feel. And, you know, I've been feeling like this for a long time. But to just cut her off. I wouldn't do that. Now, the question about cutting family members off. I would not personally cut family members off. I just would not do that. That's me. But other people have done it. They've done it and they're okay with it. I don't see. I don't want to do that to a family member. Um, I don't want to have that in my heart. But then I can't tell someone else how to treat another family member. Yeah, because so. sometimes I just be ready to jump up out of here. Right. Like I, I'm, I, I tell them, right. um, there's going to be a day where I just up and leave. But then you think about how much you love your family and right. that you couldn't see yourself doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, I don't, I don't, I, I understand. I don't, I don't think she should cut her sister completely off. But there is a way to love from a distance. It is. You're absolutely right. There is a way you can do that. Um. Like you haven't said anything like you t- you help take care of your sister or right. you help make sure she take her medication and things like that, but it's also scary because 
you all live with your mom and who knows what can happen to your mom when you're right. not there when you're not there right wow i don't I don't know. What would your mom say to you just leaving and never speaking to your sister again? Well, at some point, she's going to have to leave. Yeah, because she's, what, 20? She's 21. Yeah, so... so she's but not not, I don't think it's about leaving. I think it's about once I leave, should I'm I... cutting her off. Yeah, period. cut her off, and I don't think she should cut her off. Yeah. I don't think she should cut... Especially when you've described her as being mental. Yeah, but is there a way that her sister... I don't know. You know what I mean? Because just imagine you, just you cutting somebody mental. Away. Just imagine yeah. putting cutting somebody off that's mental, and then you tell that story to people, and they'd be like, "Why would you do that? Your sister's mental. You know she's mental." But then it's the the abuse that she dealt with for so many years. From I understand that, man. but I understand that, but you still live with her. It's not like you were abused and you moved away. You're actually still in the same house with her to this day. Actually, you writing that letter, you're still living with her. So. You're able if you are able to deal with that while you're still in the house with her, you can still speak to your sister once you move out, because you ain't cut her off now. Mm-hmm. And there are plenty of people who live with people and cut them off. Right, <laughs> plenty. That's that. That is. That Think is, about the couples who don't sleep in the same bed with each other mm-hmm. and can't wait for that divorce to be finalized, but they sleep in one sleeping upstairs and the other one sleeping downstairs. You yeah. go your way, I go my way. Well, some just stay together. I ain't and, staying and with somebody who I'm miserable with. Yeah. That's out of the question. Never. Don't. Let some me tell you something. Do my because piece, it's cheaper to no, keep. I it. don't care how cheap it is. <laughs> my to piece keep. is too important <laughs> to stay with somebody that's making me miserable. Right. Too important. Okay. Yeah. I. Stu- Let me tell you something. When I close my eyes, when all of us close our eyes for the last time, when we go into that grave, we go into that grave by ourselves, not with our spouses. Okay. Unless you have a double plot and one casket on top. But you know what I mean. I'm going in that casket by <laughs> myself. myself. So therefore. I'm not going to if I'm going out of here by myself why the hell would I be sticking around with you making me miserable till I get the hell out of here mm-hmm. I'm not doing that I want to enjoy my life for as long as I can while I'm here on this earth and I do not plan on being miserable with somebody Man, you know there's <laughs> some people that love that love them games and I don't got well, guess time what? for it that's why I've never been into games I don't have any games yeah. on my phone I don't play games <laughs> literally and figuratively I don't yeah it's, it's people that love it they like being miserable or yeah, I'll play that game. Place. How many fingers can you stick? No. Mm, I don't don't do that. Cause I don't even play those games. You keep saying that, but um I don't. <laughs> I don't. Mm, the proof's gonna come up. Mm-mm. So yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for your questions. If you have any question that you would like to ask, you know, please make sure you Hit us up on my Instagram or on our Instagram, the Scorpion Show Podcast. Or I don't even want to send your email. Just send it to the Scorpion Show Podcast. It'll come straight to the uh, to the DM. It'll, it'll be there. So make sure y'all send that. I want to say thank you to everyone who has listened to the podcast, to everyone who has downloaded the podcast. I'm just I'm just really excited for this new for this new journey and it's been fun so far even discussing it just talking about the podcast it's been fun and even getting you getting you guys feedback on youtube thank you to everyone who sent their feedback in um i'm trying to think what else it is that i can say before we close this because this is the long i believe this is our longest show now but thank you guys really appreciate it if you have any suggestions any tips you can always Right, the Scorpion Show podcast. Sh- if it's our longest show, why would you want to make it longer by saying something? Because people are driving, they probably stuck in traffic, and they're like, "Damn, this video about the yeah, well, but it's not even a but, video." But but, <laughs> but that has hard, nothing to yeah. do with my stomach or my bladder. You're right. It does not You're right. listen. Okay, I'm hungry too. <laughs> All right, I'm hungry. So let's say bye. Hope everybody gets home safely. Hope yeah. everybody enjoy their day at work. Uh, where else are they yeah. listening to us? And, and you know uh, what? Them next yeah, door. Yeah, they gotta go. <laughs> and we haven't talked in depth Them about next door. <laughs> we haven't talked in depth about Lashawn Daniels, but I want to say rest in peace to Lashawn Daniels. Yeah, rest in peace to him. And you know, we send our condolences to his wife, his children, his family, and friends. Um, I believe when we come back on YouTube, we like as a real YouTube video, we can talk more in depth about it. Uh, we'll find we'll probably find out more details as well, but we do know that he passed away in a car crash. So we want to send our 
condolences. How about maybe also this weekend while watching Style in Hollywood, you listen to a bunch of songs that was written by LaShawn yeah. Daines because yeah. that man Dames. was great with that pen. Yeah. All right, you guys, we're going to get out of here. You guys have a great weekend, and we will talk to you guys next week. Peace.